Hello, 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 hello. How's it going? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that was about, but that's that's what we're going with. Cheers, Kevin here, and uh, today just coming at you with another just sort of vloggy thing because that's that's what that's what we've been doing on this channel, and you know it's it's cathartic for me. And I'm enjoying it, and yeah, I want to talk to you today. So I've been a little bit, I've been running kind of off, <laughs> off script uh, in the past few of these videos. And by off script, I mean I haven't made notes ahead of time. I just sort of turn on the camera and ramble. But I feel like I get I'm into way too many tangents that way. So I'm back to writing stuff on my good old notepad. I love, I so I have, I've, I've tried. <laughs> Speaking of tangents, I've tried writing in a bunch of different platforms. I, I, when I was trying to write fiction, I was writing on the computer and I liked doing that. Um, when I write in a journal, I write in a, a Moleskin notebook, but I find that it's hard to use a Moleskin notebook for like taking notes. I really, I'm just discovering that, man, these pads are amazing. Cause I could just, I can either flip to the next page if it's something I want to keep around or I can tear it off if it's something that's like, this is a short term, like list of things I need to remember for today and they're no longer relevant. Um, anyway, I don't know why why that's part of the topic, but I have, <laughs> yes, okay, ooh, uh, I'm a mess. All right, uh, I have the four things that I want to talk about. I've written health, motivation, New York, and uh, attitude. So, the, yes, uh, I also should apologize. My hair is a bit of a nightmare. I just, I got back from a walk about... 20 minutes ago, went out walking for about an hour and a half around two in the morning, because that's what normal people do. Uh, but yeah, it's raining out. So not the best walking weather, and my hair is all gross now. Uh, humid and humid and rainy. Story of the story of today. Okay, so let's 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 go on to the first topic because uh, this has been the thing that we've been talking about um, on the most recent set of uh, set of videos. Let's talk about health. Okay, so health. Hmm. I do not have it yet. I'm working on it. I, I'm searching. I'm, I'm making progress. I'm, I've got my little metal detector going out to the beach and waving it around to find metallic health. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I was talking about. All right. Ugh. Um, have been doing a bunch of reading about various diets and arguments, most of them contradictory, which is always, always super, super, super helpful. It's just, come on, it's health, guys. Like, can we just, can we just not? Um, but, I, you know, obviously the, the reason that there's so much out there is because it's a challenge for a lot of different people and that there are things that are uh, easy, that are, that are perhaps work for some people, but that are difficult to stick to, don't work for other people and are easy to stick to and, you know, whatever. And so everybody has their own sort of opinion and take on things. And of course, it's, you can't ever really definitively prove like this is the thing. This is the way that everything's supposed to go. Um, so my own uh, experiment uh, with uh, trying to lose weight and be more healthy um, is, is progressing. Um, I had, I'm coming off of a run of like four days where I was pretty much just sort of flatlining, which was kind of depressing because I was doing it's water weight, but I was, <laughs> but I was losing pretty regularly. I was stepping on the scale and then like my withings thing, like it'll pop up on my phone. It's like, congrats on hitting a new low weight, like every day. I'm like, cool. I'll take that encouragement. <laughs> um, but that's, yeah. Th so it, it kind of stalled today. I woke up and I was two pounds down from where I was yesterday. So I guess whatever was stalling has stopped. So I'm catching, I'm catching up. I'm making up for lost time, which is, which is good and promising. Um, a couple of you asked in the last video, um, if I would consider making some videos about meal prep or kind of just what I'm doing nutrition wise. And I thought about, it. in fact, I even started recording some stuff, but then I decided, no, um, I'm not going to do that. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain why. So I was rambling earlier about, uh, diets and people having their own opinions about stuff and it all being confusing and contradictory and whatnot. I don't want to contribute to that. Um, that's, that's kind of the first thing is that, um, what works for me may be super unhealthy. I may go in and discover like, oh, my lipids are poisoned. I'm going to die uh, because I ate too many kale. I'm not eating kale, by the way, right now. but <laughs> And I don't think my lipids are poisoned. But who knows? Uh, anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to go out there. This is not something that I, that I'm informed about. What I am doing right now is experimenting, right? I am of a large enough size, but still healthy enough to walk around and get ingredients from the stores and cook some stuff up and manage my own life. 
um, you know, I'm, I'm ambulatory. I'm able to walk around. I'm able to get around places. Um, then I can afford to experiment and go, Hey, is this working? Is this not? Um, and really I am not at all trying to figure out like, Oh, here is the diet that is a healthy thing. This I'm, this, I'm really just, this is a sample size of one. I'm trying to figure out what works for me. I'm not trying to figure out what works for everybody. If I were trying to work out where, what's the, 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 for everybody, then I would start isolating variables and I would have multiple people whose diets I control. So we can be like, all right, you two eat nothing but kale and you eat nothing but spinach and we'll see which of you has more poisoned lipids. Yeah, because that's how science works. Um, point is, I just, I don't want to spout out, I don't want people to copycat, not the people are going to copycat, but anyway, if there are, um, if you're just looking for uh, kind of meal preppy type stuff, um, I would recommend taking a look at the YouTube channel Fit Couple Cooks. They've been doing this series of various meal prep meals. Um, it's a good place to kind of start. Um, I've just got, you know, some people were mentioning that basically the problem with meal prep is that things don't freeze very well and it's unpleasant when it reheats. Um, that's kind of the second thing with me is that I don't care. Uh, I have, <laughs> as much as I have a weird relationship with, uh, with, with food, uh, perhaps codependent, like unhealthy smothering relationship with food, <laughs> there's some imagery, um, my my goal with this meal prep is not to like have delicious stuff. It's to have let's make this be super super easy. Um, I don't care if it tastes delicious. I don't care if it tastes bland. And some of the stuff that I was cooking did end up tasting bland when I reheated it. But that was fine because the only goal was let's make the let's get rid of the choice of hmm what do I want to have today and debating what all of you know all of think imagining all of the possible foods that I could eat because that seems to make me hungry. Um, <laughs> I, I just, I've noticed. So my goal has not been to be like, hey, let's try and find some deliciousness. My goal is like, let's just make this a regular habit. And then, you know, we can move toward making stuff delicious at some point. But the goal is like, let's make this easy enough that I can stick to it. The stick to itiveness and following the rules, that's that's the goal for me. Um, but anyway, Fit Couple Cooks uh, has some great videos on, on various meal prep recipes if you want to look at that. Um, I, I did take a couple of their stuffs and uh, worked out well for me. They did say not to freeze it and they don't like microwave and stuff. I ignored that. I froze it and then microwaved it. So, hmm, uh, don't, doesn't follow directions. That's me. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's what's up about my health. Um, it's still, it's going to take a long time, right? Um, I did actually notice though, and this is, this is, this was really exciting for me. So I, I said in the last video, like, I'm not going to feel good for a very long time. So I say that, but then I discovered something really, really dumb. And that is, and it's, and it's, I, I was expecting, like, I'm never going to notice, uh, losing weight. Right. Uh, because I'm, I'm very, very large. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm right now I'm, um, a little under 350 pounds. And, you know, that's, that's large. And I'm not really going to feel better until I get down into the 200s. Like it's, I'm 50 pounds away from going like, oh, I noticed something. Other people are more likely to notice before I feel any different or even look any different because of body image and stuff. Um, but I did notice yesterday that I could tighten my wristwatch one more band. Like my wristwatch felt loose, which was awesome. Um, it was just like the smallest, tiny little thing. And I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty... That's pretty cool. Like it's, it seems so trivial saying it now, but man, it was really exciting to feel. And, um, I don't know, but I want to be careful about that because, um, and this, yeah, we're going to segue into motivation. I want to talk about motivation. I want to talk about how we motivate ourselves to do things. So, and particularly, this has been a topic both not just with the weight loss stuff, but also with, uh, YouTube things. Um, if I look back on my YouTube, if, no, let's, let's not just approach this from a YouTube perspective. Let's just talk about the motivation in general. How do you get yourself to do stuff that you want to do? Well, if we think about that, that should be trivially easy. You want to do it. And so then you're going to do it. But same, but some, some, for some strange reason, thank you, Kevin, you can words for some strange reason that doesn't always happen. Odd. Uh, how did I not take a shower? I woke up and I was like, I want to take a shower. And then it just doesn't happen. Either you get distracted or it's just like, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to wait for the hair to dry and try and get a 
hairbrush through it after washing it. I don't, I don't want to have to see myself in the mirror, which is a thing for me. Um, whatever, whatever. The, but th that's showering is probably not your problem. Uh, other problems, <laughs> other problems may plague you. Maybe it's like I want to uh, go to the gym. Uh, I I can't relate. <laughs> I've never wanted to go to any gym, not even the Pokemon gym, because it's it's like it's like a block away. I don't want to. Uh. <laughs> I, so I can't relate. That's on you. You're gonna have to figure out your own backstory there. But why is it that we don't do these things? Well, it's because the person who is deciding that future you, future us, should do stuff is not the same person that's deciding what are we gonna do now. Um, or rather, it's easy to conceptualize our brain in terms of being the, these kind of two different identities. So the question then becomes how do we how do we fix that? And one of the one of the ways that we can do that, uh, one of the ways that we can motivate ourselves. And this is um, I, I guess the the easiest example is the uh, it, the vacation principle. So th this has probably happened to you. It certainly happens to me. Um, I I have a really hard time getting up in the morning. Um, but if I know that I'm traveling, like I have to get to the airport and get on a plane, I get up before my alarm clock and it's always really weird. Like I'm exhausted. So generally like the night before, so like you're going to Disney world, right? You're super excited. You're going to go to Disney world. It's going to be amazing. And, uh, it's the night before you're going to get on the plane. And so you're going like, Oh man, I can't wait to go to Disney world. I can't wait. It's going to be so, so, so cool. And you are sitting there in bed going, Oh man, this is going to be so much fun. I can't wait to go to the plane. Go to the plane. And you look over at the clock and it's like, Oh God, it's like two in the morning. I gotta be up at five in the morning. I gotta get to go to sleep so I can just go. Oh God! And now, now you're panicking because you're gonna fall asleep and then completely sleep through Disney World. It's gonna be the worst. Um, this happens to me all of the time, whether it's whether it's business trip or whatever. Um, but there's the anticipation of this future thing, and you go to sleep, and then, for me, like there have been times where I go to sleep an hour before. So I get <laughs> before I need to be awake and I will wake up five minutes before the alarm, which how can I, why can't I just do that every day? I oversleep so much of the time I could, you mean, like, basically I need to get like 10 hours of sleep. I need to, I need to fall asleep 10 hours early to make sure that I'm up by a particular time normally, but it's like, oh, well, no, you, you've got to be up to catch a plane. So I'm going to wake you up five minutes before your alarm despite the fact that you've only had one hour of sleep. How does that work? Well, the, the idea is you're anticipating, you're excited, um, you're enthusiastic about what it is that you want to do. And so somehow your brain is just like, oh, well, if it's a priority, well, then in that case, yeah, we'll totally exert some self-control and do the stuff that you want to do. Perfect. And this applies to a lot of life, right? Um, you are more likely to make a lot of uh, YouTube videos if you... <laughs> because that's, that's what everybody does as part of their normal lives. Um, you're more likely to make a lot of YouTube videos when things are going well and you're super excited about the stuff that you're making and the response that it's getting and how, uh, you know, and, and the process and you're learning things, you're, you're developing new skills, all of a sudden you're adding new intro things and you're learning how to edit a little bit better and everything's getting, going really, really well. The problem, the problem is that this is so frail. Um, and you'll know, and even that sleeping example, I had the same things when I, I have the same thing when I switch jobs, the first few weeks of a new job, I am up in the morning and I'm super excited, um, to go to the new job and meet the new people and do the cool new things and learn cool stuff. After a while, it just becomes normal. The excitement, the, the adrenaline, the thrill, the anticipation of the next day sort of starts to wear off a little bit. Um, and with, you know, creative endeavors, there are going to be bad days. And then, oh no, <laughs> the entirety, uh, your entire motivational strategy is destroyed. There's nothing left. How do you make yourself do things? I, ah, you don't want to. There's not the enthusiasm. You want to in the, like in the maternal or paternal voice in your head that's like, you should do this thing today. <laughs> I know, that's like a gender-neutral mom or dad voice, I guess. Um, you want to do that in, in that sense, but when it comes to sitting down and going like, ah, oh, I'm supposed to write. Uh, what's, what's going on on Reddit? Um, <laughs> you know, whatever the case may be, if you rely solely on enthusiasm to motivate yourself, you're setting yourself up in a, in a very brittle position. Now, that's not to say that it, uh, motivation can be incredibly, that, that uh, enthusiasm is an incredibly powerful force, right? It is the only thing, the only thing that lets me wake up before my alarm, 
having gotten one hour of sleep. The only thing. I've never, I've never found a way to do it any other way. I've tried having six different alarms. I've had a rolly alarm that rolls along the floor. It doesn't work. I will, I will have somehow managed to turn all of them off and then be back in bed and wake up six hours later having completely blacked out the experience. That is <laughs> so... Yes, enthusiasm is a fantastic motivator, but it is brittle. It is fickle. It is so easy to lose, and then it's just gone, and then ah, things fall apart. So, I was thinking about what are the ways that I, what are the, so I've been trying to figure out how I motivate myself to do whatever. Um, in particular, I was thinking about how, what are the success stories that I can look at in my life, things where I, you know, managed to stick to something uh, for a long enough period to see see results, and uh, you know, what what are the ways that, that have worked for me? Most of my YouTube stuff uh, for a long period of time has been enthusiasm based. I make videos when I am excited to make them, and then inevitably that falls off, and then you're just left with the guilt voice going, hey, "You should have done the thing, but you didn't do the thing because you weren't thrilled about doing the thing." And that's true of, of not just YouTube, but, you know, other other creative projects or even various work stuffs. You know, I, I should put in some extra. No. Uh -huh. um, the stories the stories that I have that have worked well for me was my first year of YouTube when I said, I'm going to put out something every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That was the rule. It didn't have to be good, by the way. And a lot of it wasn't. Some of it was, though. Or maybe that's just rose-colored glasses and that sort of thing. Um but it was, it was rules-based. Um, the same thing with giving up smoking. That was rules-based. Um, right now, what's working for me with eating healthier is that it's rules-based. And I'm not relying on the idea of, oh, look, my wristwatch is feeling a little bit lighter. Or, Man, my back doesn't hurt quite as much. Or, oh, my gosh, I think I'm, not, I'm, I think my, my, I'm getting a, a little bit of my uh, wrist problems are starting to go away as well. Those are all thrilling, but I want to be very, very careful that I don't start using them as the fuel to drive this project of not dying that I'm working on, because <laughs> that's not that's not a strategy that I can depend on on rainy days. Right? It is a it, enthusiasm based motivation is a fair weather friend um, for me. The, the two things that have worked really, really well are setting up a system of rules and then that, that are that are, you know, that are very strict and saying, I'm going to do these. And they're absolute and they're extreme. But then the second step is try and make those rules as easy as possible to follow. So, for example, I don't say I have meal prep Sunday. The, the rule there is not, well, OK, in the morning you're going to prep this and this and this. It's just you need to make the food at some point in the day. You can lie around on the floor and watch TV the whole rest of the day if you want. But this is the only thing. This is the only part of the rule. And I make that rule a bit easier by trying to buy ingredients beforehand. So it's not Sundays like, oh, go shopping and then go to... Uh. I try and make sure that all the ingredients are there. They're all refrigerated. Sometimes stuff is prepped. Um, all of these rules, I try and make sure that they are as easy, that it is more of a pain when it's when possible that you try and make the rules more of a pain not to follow than to follow. Um, another example would be just be like setting out the clothes you're going to wear the night before. And it's actually more of a pain to like walk into the closet and pick out an outfit than just put on the stuff there because it's already there. Now following the rule becomes the easy default option. Um, and that's really what has helped me motivationally is just making the default option as easy as possible. Um, this is something that I'm working on with YouTube as well in terms of trying to make it very easy to go from uh, recording a video to editing a video to publishing a video. Um, and like with the podcast as well, I have this whole system set up so that basically once the edit is done, it's going to go ahead and figure out the whole, oh, we'll push it to SoundCloud and make sure all the metadata is there and push it up to YouTube and then push those things all live and all of that. Um, but I'm trying to work on that process a little bit more. All right. Um, we're rambling very long. Um, let me just touch on these two topics because I, I billboarded them at the beginning of this uh, at this video, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about them. Um, though some of you have mentioned that this is a long, these are some long episodes, which can be intimidating if you're the type of person that's uh, generally watching five minute uh, things. I I definitely sympathize. I will say, put this on in the background if it's uh, if it if you find it interesting, but it's like oh this is long, um, or if you have the YouTube Red stuff, you can uh, close the app on your phone and the audio will just play. Um, but anyway, I, I know that doesn't solve the problem for everybody, but 
mm, these are, these are the types of videos that I'm making on this channel right now. That's probably going to change. Um, we'll get into that. So New York, I want to say there are kind of two, there are three things. There are three things that I miss from New York. Uh, someone asked me and I don't remember. Oh, I can't remember who it was and I should remember who it was. Oh man, this was really recently too. I, I'm, I have such a terrible memory. Somebody asked me, do I miss things from New York? Because, um, usually people who leave New York have these attitudes of, uh, sort of these wistful appreciation, uh, a wistful appreciation from, for, for New York. And I was thinking about it and no, no, I really, really don't. Um, the things that I, <laughs> there are three things that I miss from New York. I was thinking about this. Part of that is that I didn't do much in New York. I was in my apartment most of the time. Um, but I was thinking there are three things that I really miss from New York. One of them is being able to walk, um, around the coast of Manhattan. Um, so that was just a wonderful place to, to go for long walks. Um, I had this whole pattern of like going out every day and walking for getting my thousand steps in, which is, you know, somewhere around eight to 10 kilometers, depending on the day, um, which was, which was absolutely fantastic. It's just gorgeous uh, to walk around. The other thing I really miss is public transit. Um, man, they're, they're very good at uh, laying out a city that doesn't need cars. I wish that I, I was thinking about this as I was walking around out here and I was looking at all of these parked cars everywhere. If you think about it, every parked car is a mistake, right? I like in a perfect world, if you were to like design a, a sim world top down, you'd say, all right, well, we're just going to figure out how to share the cars equally so that no car should ever not be in use. <laughs> so every parked car is a misallocation of resources. Um, that's just, nah. um, but the third thing that I really, really miss <laughs> is I have, I had, when I, when I first moved in, uh, to New York, I flew out there with a backpack and, a small suitcase. And the, a few weeks later, my dad was in town for business and he brought another suitcase. So that was all that I had. Um, I didn't go out there with any furniture. I didn't move anything in. Like, they're like, oh, well, you should schedule a move-in day. I'm like, how about I just, like, I need the key and then I'll just sling this off and then I'm done. Like, that's what... <laughs> um, so I had to buy some furniture. And one of the things that I bought was just a small nice little dining room set. And it ended up becoming kind of my, uh, I didn't end up using it as a dining room set. I ended up using it as my desk. It was this, this wonderful table and these very, very comfortable dining room chairs. It's a cheap set, but these chairs were so ridiculously comfortable. And I just, it blew me away. And I've been thinking about this because this chair, not the best. I have a recliner that's comfortable, but that's only, you don't want to be reclining all of the time. Um, th I don't like this desk chair. And I was looking it was something that I really, I wanted to be able to move uh, with me, but couldn't figure out a way to do it cost effectively. So I was like, all right, you know, these were $200. This was a $200 set of furniture. It's, you know, five years old now. Right, we'll just stitch it, um, which was, which was depressing. But now I was, I was looking to see if I could just get a replacement set. Cause I was like, man, I really want these back. They were off of the market. They were like, oh, no, this is out of stock. And we don't know if it'll ever be in stock again. And it just showed up again. And I'm having, so I'm getting... My, my dining set, the one that I had before, I'm hoping it's still, it, I didn't just like get a good batch, That's but that, that'll that be coming in soon, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to just have a really comfy, uh, you know, dining chair that I'll probably put in here, and then I'll, I'll put one of them in, uh, in my room and set up like a little writing desk area. It'll be amazing. Everything's going to be fantastic. But anyway, those are the three things that I miss from New York. Um, other than that, no, it's it's nice being here and things being quiet and there being pleasant uh, pleasant people who smile at you. It's weird, but it's cool. Finally, I want to talk about attitude, and because we are running, oh yeah, that, okay, that's not as bad as I thought. Um, well, we're at 23 minutes, which for you guys, is, yeah, okay, that's probably that's probably a while. But I want to talk about attitude real quick. I was thinking about the type of stuff that I make, and uh, I, I was editing uh, one of the one of the book reviews, and I was going through, and I decided, okay, you know, just for practice, because I'm still getting used to editing with uh, Adobe Premiere. I said, all right, just to practice, let's go through and edit this in the very jump cutty type of style and cut out all of the ums, cut out all of the, all of the, all of the false starts because there are a lot of them. You don't notice until you start editing these out. You go, oh my God, I do some craziness. Um, or just the filler words. And I said, okay, we're going to try and cut all of this stuff out and just make this thing as, you know, it's going to be as choppy as it is, but we're going to make this thing omit those. That was a, that was a lot, but I was thinking about the type of content that I make and the attitude that I have and the people that I look up to and 
so in addition to some of you have been saying on the, on the last few videos, it's like, you know, whatever you do, please continue to be honest. Um, and I certainly do intend to do that. But one of the things that I think might not be the best thing, and I'm still not entirely sure on this, is I don't know that it is a good, whether it's a good idea to be depressing. <laughs> I'm depressed a lot. Right. I have I have problems. I have reasons to be upset. Um, <laughs> it's it's part of how how my life is right now. It's getting better, um, and I'm certainly I'm making a lot of progress right now. This is this is one of my good phases. Um, but I was looking at it, it, on on the one hand, I like the fact that I'm trying to be candid. Um, looking at some of kind of my older, older, some of these additional rambly videos. I like the fact that I'm trying to be candid, but at the same time, I was thinking about people that I look up to and really, and occasionally you'll see something like, you know, they'll say, Hey, yeah, I'm actually really struggling. And it's always a surprise. What that means though, is that, is that they are, um, focusing on the happy stuff a lot more of the time, or at least presenting a lot of that to the point where it's not like if, if I say, oh, I'm feeling kind of sad, you're not like, yeah, what else is new? Like the, <laughs> if I, I can be candid and I can be entertaining, um, without having to be, and, and be honest without having to be just the, um, all of the time, I want to try and work on being more enthusiastic, putting out stuff that is more entertaining, even when I'm not necessarily feeling up to it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm being dishonest by not wearing, you know, my heart on my sleeve when I'm feeling down, right? I don't, I think there's a distinction between not, not just being a, a mopey person and being dishonest. I think there's a, there's, and there's, I think there's a wide difference between that. And I think that's something that I'm kind of coming to now. Um, because I, I guess for a while I just figured those were kind of the same things. If I'm feeling like Eeyore and I come on here and I'm like, hello, then I am a liar. Knock it off. Well, that's not, that's not the case. At any point in time, we're feeling a plethora of emotions. I feel miserable and delighted and enthusiastic and hyped and whatever. I don't want to, I don't want to just say like, hey, well, let's just show off the Eeyore stuff. And I don't even want to necessarily show off a balanced, uh, representation of all of the feels <laughs> that I have. What I want to do is I want to provide something that is um, insightful and entertaining and something that amuses you, entertains you, makes your day a little bit better. And generally speaking, commiserating is not productive. Um, it can be helpful. It, it is it is not helpful for you, for me to just tell you all of the things that suck in my life. It might be helpful for, it, it's certainly helpful for me, and it would be helpful for you to vent to me about all of the things that suck in your life. That's venting. Venting is great. Listening to venting is not, like, I'm, we're doing this at the reverse scale, right? <laughs> like, so, so you have a venter and a ventee. The venter feels better. The ventee is like, all right, I can put up with this, but it requires some patience. What I'm doing is I'm going like, I'm going to vent, and then you all, you all get to take the ventee side. So I'm amplifying the negative consequences of being a little bit down in the videos. And so I want to start and start working on changing uh, my style, my presentation. I really do want to get, I'm, I've got some more stuff that is coming that I think is going to help. And I'm trying to set up a recording area in there to start making videos on a proper camera again, instead of the webcam video recording um, and fancy mic setup. Working on that, it needs some acoustic treatment. There's there's stuff to do, but I want to start making things that are more entertaining, um, but still honest. I want to be, I, I, I still want to be honest with you. I want to be the type of person that you feel like, all right, yeah, we, we, we get it. We're in the same boat because we are. We're all just trying to go like, oh man, how does life work? It's hard and it's challenging, but we're going to get through it. You know, it's going to take a long time and there are going to be, Swings around about us. Um, but we're, we're going to get there. And I think that I can be um, just as, just as sympathetic. There's, there's, there's some, there's some uplift in seeing people that you're like, oh man, they're just, they're just as, they're just as down as I am. Like, oh man, we're all in this together. We're all miserable together. But I think that you can be just as supportive by saying, hey, let's look at this really cool thing. Um, let's be excited about this small aspect uh, 
this let's be excited about this small really cool thing even if the rest of the day is miserable like let's try and pick ourselves up of course that's going to require me really not relying on this whole enthusiasm thing to make videos so that's why these whole rules like i'm gonna i'm making this stuff on a regular basis on a schedule because if i don't then yeah it's very easy for me to kind of sink back down anyway with all of that said and now i have wasted a full half hour of your time oh man shame on me right sort of i don't know i feel like i'm I feel like these videos are getting better, even if they are getting longer and more time consuming. And, uh, you know, you guys don't you guys don't have to watch them. That's fine. Um, I am going to probably switch this stuff up soon. Um, although this week I was focusing on getting um, more stuff up on the gaming channel. I've got a whole slew of videos up this week. Um, something every day of the week, which is crazy for me. I've had to, I'm trying to stagger some batch recordings and figure out how to schedule and organize that. Um the, the podcast is going super well. Um, that's all distributed on all of the things now. Um, and then I think, yeah, I think next week we may just kind of, I may just sort of coast <laughs> on the, on the schedule I'm currently at and not try and not necessarily try and ramp up, uh, any of, any of the channels yet, um, but more try and focus on like, all right, let's get this studio to a recordable place and just work on that and general life stuff and see how, see how we do. Um, yeah. So, that is it for me. I hope that you're having a great day. Like, I really do. I say that all of the time. Um, I hope you're having a good week or I hope you're having a great day. And it feels like a platitude, but I earnestly do. Like, I, I want you to be doing well. Like, I know, I, I know that some of you don't do well. I don't do well a lot of the time. And it's sad. But I also don't want you to feel pressured into doing well. I want you to... I, I want... <laughs> uh, I want to cause you to smile, but not ask you to. That's my goal, I think. Anyway... Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.